Every year, students of the Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology program at Camosun College in Victoria, BC are required to complete a final project in their last academic term. Students demonstrate their final projects for faculty, other students, prospective employers and the public at large at a year-end event. A final project has long been a component of the technology courses at Camosun College, and in April of 2012, Blair, Day and myself began our last academic quarter before receiving our technologist diplomas. Even before the last quarter started, Blair and I knew what we wanted to create, so we started the planning early. And right before our final term was to start, Blair had a computer simulation of the project ready to go. As the pressure came down, we ma I made sure that I designed a stable enough frame that we'd be able to do all of the work that we needed, as well as be able to um, add on in the future. The frame was designed in less than seven hours, a day before the quarter began, so that we made sure that on day one, we had all of the materials that we needed. We called the project STRV, which stands for Shape Shifting Tracked Robotic Vehicle. And in the simplest terms, it is an internet-controlled robot equipped with two-way audio, high-definition webcams, and four sets of tracks, allowing it to crawl over obstacles. Once the initial design was completed, the difficult task of sourcing parts began. The main brain of our robot was the device that required the most consideration, as it needed to be powerful enough to handle dual webcams, but power efficient so as to make efficient use of the robot's batteries. It wasn't long before Blair and I settled on the pogo plug. The Pogo Plug was originally intended to be a network attached storage appliance, but it has since been hacked to run Arch Linux, a popular distribution of the Linux operating system. Boasting 256 megabytes of RAM, a 1.2 gigahertz ARM processor, four USB ports, and consuming just five watts of power, the Pogo Plug fit all our requirements to a T, and at only $49 on clearance, the price was certainly right. The pogo plug connects to the internet through a standard wireless router, meaning as long as there is Wi-Fi around, it can be operated. The robot moves thanks to the four sets of tracks which are powered by standard DC motors. The speed and direction of the motors are controlled by a PIC 18F 4685 microcontroller, which receives instructions from the pogo plug computer over a serial connection. The microcontroller generates two PWM waveforms, which are used to regulate the speed of the left and right hand tracks independently. The direction of the motors is controlled by two L293NE motor driver chips. STRV gets the shape shifting part of its name from the four stepper motors that are placed in between the tracks and the robot's frame. The stepper motors allow us to alter the angle of the tracks relative to the ground, making obstacle navigation a little easier. The stepper motors are driven by eight A4975 motor driver circuits, which are also controlled from the PIC microcontroller. The robot's frame is constructed of 6061 T6 aluminum, which is extremely strong. The entire frame was constructed using only a drill press with a milling bit and hand tools. The frame was built from a single block of aluminum and took about three weeks to fully construct. More custom machining was required to make the supports for our tracks. Eight triangular shaped pieces of metal were cut out of a single sheet of aluminum to support the treads of the robot's tracks. In week eight of our final academic term, Blair and I finally started to see things coming together. The frame, in all its glory, had been built. After the construction of the frame was completed, things began falling into place. The stepper motors were mounted days later, and the tracks attached. Once the robot was built, I could finally implement the programming code I had been working on for nine weeks, and it worked great. After, of course, the bugs were worked out. Then, in week 10, disaster struck. We were moving the pogo plug around in the case while it was running and something shorted, blowing the USB controllers and making it impossible to attach any peripheral devices, such as USB flash drives or our webcams. Something had to be done, and fast. Once we determined that the pogo plug was no longer serviceable, we began brainstorming ideas. And, as it has many times before, usedvictoria.com came through. Used Victoria is a popular website where residents buy and sell everything from laptops to satellite dishes to clothing and pet supplies. It wasn't long before Blair and I found an Asus EEE PC for a reasonable price. 
The Asus EEE PC was first introduced in 2007, and the model that we picked up sported a 700 megahertz processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, built-in audio, and three USB ports. It wasn't long before we had Arch Linux up and running again, and soon it was in control of our serial communications program, audio streaming, and dual webcams. Things, once again, were back on track. The last week went by rapidly, and soon the night before demo day was upon us, and the robot was finally crawling over the ground. Just over 12 hours later, Demo Day was upon us, and Blair and I found ourselves in front of a meticulously prepared booth explaining our creation to the hordes of people present at the event. It was at this moment that the entire project really seemed to become real. 11 weeks, boxes of parts, and literally hundreds of hours of labor later, STRV, an internet-controlled robot built entirely from scratch, was complete. Now is this the end of the project completely? Certainly not. Blair and I have already started talking about making possible revision 2 of STRV in the near future. But it is the end of our project course. Now in the future, graduation, a few final exams, and then, who knows? For INET, this is Christopher, reporting.